In the last one, we went over modular arithmetic. Now let's talk about how a modulus defines equivalence classes. So if we look at all integers, we can divide the integers into two what are called equivalence classes, odd and even. So every integer is either odd or even and not both. So these are called equivalence classes. Now, it turns out that this is just mod two, actually, because all even numbers are equal or equivalent mod two, and all odd numbers are equal mod two. So for example, if I take an even number eight and divide it by two, there's no remainder. Same for any even number. So all even numbers are equal mod two, and I, I take an odd number, like seven divided by two, there's a remainder of one. There's always a remainder of one when dividing by an odd number by two. So all odd numbers are equal mod two. So that's why they are called equivalence classes. We don't have to use mod two to get equivalence classes. We can use any modulus and get the, exactly that number of equivalence classes. So let's take a look at mod three. So if we just count vertically here, one, two, three, and then go to a new column every three numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we get the three equivalence classes of mod three. At the bottom, we have all the multiples of three. So those are all equal mod three. And then all the numbers in the top row, if we divide them by three, we will get a remainder of one, any of these numbers. And in the second row, divide any of these numbers by two, sorry, by three, we will get a remainder of two. And so we can do the same thing with mod four, mod, mod five, mod eight million, whatever we want. We just have that many rows and get that number of equivalence classes. Now let's take a look at mod nine. So here are our nine equivalence classes. Uh, there's some big gaps here. And so what's special about mod nine, kind of like how even and odd have always been mod two, no one just ever told you. Mod nine has a special property as well, and that is called the digital sum. So digital sum is just what it sounds like. It means the sum of the digits. So if I take 22 and I add the digits, two plus two is four. Well, 22 just happens to be in the fourth row here. Similarly, if I look at 16, one plus six is seven, and it's in the seventh row. Doesn't matter how far you go out, the digital sum will always be in the correct row for mod nine. So we can look at here, 99, nine plus nine is 18. It's in the correct row, 999. That adds up to 27, it's in the correct row. And if we look up here to these numbers, uh, which add a new digit and go from 99 to 100, well, that's gonna be one mod nine. And it's just one plus zero, 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 zero. These, all of these numbers that are adding a new digit, it's one plus a bunch of zeros. It's always gonna give you a digital sum of one. So this will not work for any other modulus, except uh, it actually works for three as well. In, in mod three, we, we, also, we can also use the digital sum and that works because, well, three times three equals nine. Our next topic is prime numbers. I will very quickly define for you what a prime number is. It's easy to explain. So if we look at a rectangular grid like this, we have so many rows and columns, and if we count all of the rows and all of the columns and multiply those two numbers, then we get the total number of squares in the grid. But we don't need 
to know what that number is, to know that that number is not prime. Whatever that number is, it's not a prime number because a prime number cannot be divided into two smaller numbers. For example, the number five, I can stack up five things and then I'll have a single column of five, or I could turn it perpendicular and have a line of five things, but I cannot arrange the five things into a perfect rectangular grid. Two by two would be four, that's too small. Two by three would be six, that's too big. So these are the prime numbers. They cannot be reduced into a rectangular grid of two smaller numbers. One of the many practical uses for prime numbers is encryption. Modern computers sometimes use prime numbers to encrypt data and then to decrypt the data as well. So it's not difficult to imagine that ancient scholars who were skilled at creating codes, they could easily have used prime numbers in their codes. For example, suppose we're ancient scholars and we're looking at the the planets, the seven principal planets, and, and we want to assign to each of the planets one of the first seven prime numbers. So we would come up with something like this. Here we have the first seven prime numbers, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and the seven principal planets, Mercury, Sun, Venus, Jupiter, Moon, Mars, and Saturn. So we could assign to any of the planets any one of these prime numbers we could have done all kinds of different arrangements in fact if you count all of the possible arrangements that we could do there are 5040 possible ways to do it similarly if we want to order the seven days of the week we can start with Wednesday we can start with Thursday we can start with any of the seven days and give any any of the, the six remaining days is the next day and so on, and we would get the same number of possible orderings, 5,040. But if you want to argue that since the week is a circle, and the circle has no beginning and, and no end, if in that case there would only be 720 possible orderings because the ordering that starts with Monday and ends with Sunday is the same as the ordering that begins with Sunday and ends with Saturday. Considering that there is a significant number of possibilities, wouldn't it be compelling to observe that this specific assignment I have shown you here of the first seven prime numbers to the seven principal planets had some observable correlation with a purely mathematical sequence. Well, let's take a look now at the Fibonacci sequence. Here are the first 28 Fibonacci numbers. All right, so it goes all the way. The 28th Fibonacci number has six digits. Don't worry, we're not going to be dealing with these big numbers because we're going to use modular arithmetic and reduce them all to much smaller numbers, just one or two digits at most. Now let me quickly remind you, what is a Fibonacci number? Well, so this is a sequence and the definitive principle of this sequence is that if I take any two adjacent numbers, say, say 21 and 34, the eighth and ninth Fibonacci numbers, if I add 21 and 34, I get the 10th Fibonacci number, which is 55. 21 plus 34 is 55. And then if I add these two, 34 and 55, I get the 11th number, which is 89. And we start the sequence with one and one. So with that initial seed of one and one, we get two and then three and then five. And the sequence continues for as long as we like. Let's look at the easiest possible modulus on the Fibonacci sequence. That would be mod 2. Remember, just even or odd. So we start off odd, odd, even, the first three numbers. 
and then the next three also odd, odd, even, and then the next three again, odd, odd, even, odd, odd, even. In fact, we go through these whole 28 and we can keep going as high as we like and we will always get this repeating pattern of odd, odd, even in the Fibonacci sequence. Now this is easy to see when you think about it because whenever you add two odd numbers, you get an even number. Whenever you add two even numbers, you get another even number. And when you add an odd, one odd and one even, you get an odd number. And so since we're always adding sequential numbers in the sequence, we just keep get, getting this pattern of odd plus odd is even, odd plus even is odd, even plus odd is odd, and then odd plus odd is even. So it's just that pattern of three. There's a special name for this cycle. It is called a Pisano period, named after Leonardo Pisano, who was better known as Fibonacci. He was called Pisano because he was from Pisa. And so the Pisano period of two is this cycle of three, one, one, zero, or odd, odd, even. And we can look at the Pisano period of four and five and six and so on. And this is, would be using mod four, mod five, mod six. Now we're going to take the digital sum of the Fibonacci numbers. Now remember, the digital sum gives us the remainder after dividing by nine, which is the same thing as the number modulo nine. So the first few numbers are less than nine, and so those are the same as in the regular, regular Fibonacci sequence up to the number eight. And then when we get to 13, mod nine, the digital sum of, is one plus three, which is four. So that's the next number in the Paisano period of nine. And then the next number, 21, two plus one is three. And then 34, three plus four is seven. 55, five plus five is 10, which is one mod nine. And so on. And if we go all the way, we will get a cycle of 24, which I have here in a rectangular grid of two by 12. So we have the first 12 Fibonacci numbers digital sum, that is mod nine. And the 12th one, we, get, we go back to zero, we get to nine. And then when we go look at the next 12 underneath here, we see we have the complementary, the negations of the above number. So one, negative one mod nine is down here, that's eight. These are all the complementary numbers. Eight plus one is nine, two plus seven is nine, six plus three is nine, and so on until we get to the two nines or two zeros, since nine equals zero here, at ex exactly the midpoint, and then at the end of the sequence, because we always end a Paisano period with zero when we go back to zero and cycle back to one, one. Since a Paisano period always loops back into a circle, why not draw it out in a circle? Or even why not draw it out in two circles? Well, this is kind of one circle split into two circles, just as here I showed you this rectangular grid which takes a single line and splits it into two lines half the size. Here I have an inner circle and an outer circle. So we can think of this as a clock of 24, where we have the odd numbers on the clock, one, three, five, seven, nine, are inside of the, of the circle, and then the, the even numbers on the clock, zero, two, four, six, eight, uh, up to 22, and then back to 24 equals zero. So this is a 24 hour clock with the odd numbers inside the circle, and the even numbers outside the circle. So this is the same numbers that we have on here, starting with one, one, two, three, five, eight. We see right here, one, one, two, three, five, eight, all the way, and halfway at nine, at the 12th position opposite the top of the clock, 
12 and 24 and we go all the way around and now we can see that we have this remarkable symmetry if we look inside the circle here if we look at this line of symmetry we can see we have facing each other we we're going the same sequence of numbers both clockwise and counterclockwise we grow one two five four seven eight and we also go that same sequence in the opposite direction one two five four seven eight and similarly if we look at the outer circle and we look at the perpendicular line there is also a symmetry here where we go um, the same sequence of numbers whether we're going clockwise or counterclockwise we get one six eight nine one three down that direction one six eight nine one three going that direction so we have a line of symmetry here for the outer, outer circle and a line of symmetry here for the inner circle at the same time the lines of symmetry have another meaning so if we look at the inner circle at this line of symmetry on the inner circle we get the complementary numbers 5 plus 4 is 9 2 plus 7 is 9 1 plus 8 is 9 as well as when we look at opposite pairs we get complementary numbers that add up to 9 1 8 1 8 2 7 5 4 and so so this line of symmetry on the inner circle creates this opposite complementary reflection as opposed to this line which gives a an equal symmetry and then when we go at the outer circle we have the opposite is true of these lines of symmetry here and this line of symmetry here. one gives a perfect reflection and the, this line of symmetry here we get op complementary pairs eight and one is nine six and three is nine one and eight is nine and then nines on either end by themselves Let's take a look at the zodiac. Here, the zodiac signs are superimposed on the Mod 9 Pisano period. And here's the same cycle of numbers we saw on the previous diagram, but instead of a 24 hour clock, I put them in a 12 hour clock, 63, 6, 9, 12. And so each hour, instead of a single number, each hour has a pair of numbers. All right, so we start here, we see 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and so on. So it's the same cycle of numbers. And the reason we don't start with 1, 1 up here is because Aries is 1 o'clock. This is according to astrology. So I'll tell you a couple more details about astrology. I don't know very much about it myself, but I do know a few of these basic facts. So there are four elements. Each sign is one of the four elements. Air, earth, fire, earth, air, and water. Fire, earth, air, water. Fire, earth, air, water. So it goes in that pattern. And then the rulerships of the planets. Well, if we start here, start down here with the sun, Leo is ruled by the Sun, and then the next sign is ruled by Mercury, then Venus, then Mars, then Jupiter, then Saturn. Does that sequence sound familiar? Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. Yes, that is the standard order of the planets. And then that same sequence backwards. Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, Mercury. So we see this line of symmetry here. Oh, and then lastly ruled by the Moon is Cancer. So it's, it's the same line of symmetry. That's, that's why these numbers work to represent the planets because we've got sun and moon matching each other. Sun and moon are one. And then Mercury facing Mercury, Venus facing Venus. And actually a lot of astrologers don't even realize this, that, that you have this symmetry within the zodiac. With, uh, and we can see it very elegantly with these, these numbers here. I just mentioned earlier the four elements. 
we can see here, if we look at the numbers on the outer circle, these red ones here, the red ones are all the, the three fire signs and they form an equilateral triangle here. And if we look at the signs opposite of the red ones, we see yellow eights. The yellow eights are the air sign. And then the rest of them are three, six, and nine. We have three, six, nine going clockwise, the water signs in blue, and three, six, nine in green going counterclockwise are the earth signs. Now let's take a look at the prime key. So this key says that the, this planet Mercury is the prime number two, Venus is five, and Jupiter is seven. So those are the easy ones. We'll start with those. We see Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo. These are both twos. And Venus rules Taurus and Libra. Those are the fives. And then Jupiter rules Pisces and Sagittarius. Those are the sevens. So that's three planets. Now let's look at the last two on here, 13 and 17. Well, 13 and 17 are, are too big. We're in mod nine, so we need a single digit. But if we take the digital sum, so the mod nine for 13 and 17, we get four and eight. So if we look at Mars as four and Saturn as eight, we see here Mars rules Aries and Scorpio. Those are the fours. Saturn rules Aquarius and Capricorn. Those are the eights. Oh, so that is five out of the seven planets. Now, what's left? Sun and Moon. I have the Sun as 3 and the Moon as 11. Well, 11 again is too big because we're in mod 9, but if we take the digital sum of 11, we get 2. And Mercury already is, is taking the number 2, so we can't do that. And as for Sun as the number 3, there's a, also a problem there because 3 isn't inside of the circle at all. We have three, six, and nine outside of the circle, but in fact, no, no multiple of three is inside of the circle. There's no three, six, or nine. We have one, two, four, five, seven, and eight, but not three, six, or nine. So what happens is sun and moon are taking the one and one here. And I'm gonna talk more about that later. I have to tell you, a little bit briefly how I ended up getting into all of this. So I've always been a numbered guy, always thinking about numbers ever since I was little. And a year ago in the summertime, I was thinking a lot about prime numbers and connecting prime numbers to time. I was not aware of Pisano periods at that time. It was completely off of my radar. I got ended up getting alerted to it on an Instagram post by Robert Edward Grant uh, about Paisano periods and then that that took me down this whole thing. But before I even looked at any of that, uh, I was fascinated specifically about the numbers 7 and 13 in relation to time because obviously we have the seven day week and the number 13 um, you might not know this, but every season consists of 13 weeks. So 13 times 7 is 91. There are 91 days in a season. And then 13 times 4, uh, 4 seasons is 52. There are 52 weeks in a year. So these numbers 7 and 13 have these fascinating correlations with the sun and moon because these these week and the month and the year these are all cycles based on the sun and the moon so i'm thinking about time and prime numbers and i come across this post by robert grant and robert's talking all about time he's he's saying oh i've been i've been really getting into time and and here are all these images these pictures, diagrams, relating the mathematics of time. 
So one of those images, uh, it was not his, his own image, it was credited to Lucien Kahn, who's another mathematician. Lucien Kahn came up with this Fibonacci clock, and this is very deeply related to all of this. Um, but very quickly, I'll just explain, so this was basically the Pisano period of the number 10. And so in mod 10, since we use a 10-based decimal system, the last digit of any number is just the mod 10 of that number. So, so if I have 1,800,514, the last digit of, is 4. If I divide that whole number by 10, I will get a remainder of 4, obviously because all of the digits other than the first one represent multiples of 10. So the Paisano period of 10 is 60. And so if you put those 60 numbers in a circle, you get what's kind of like a 60 minute or 60 second clock, right? And so this is, this is a, a major hint that, that the, this Fibonacci sequence might have something to do with time. Now, it did not mention Pisano periods in the post, but with my mathematical mind, I immediately grasped the concept. I thought, well, so that's, that's looking at the Fibonacci sequence mod 10. What if we looked at it in mod 5 or mod 12 or, or whatever? And so I immediately started looking into that. And, and, and then soon after that, I learned that it's, there's a name for that. Oh, it's Pisano period. Oh, and then I could look it up and see it's, it's on, on Wikipedia. I could see all of the sequences. But I, I could calculate them all myself. I wrote actually wrote a, a, a simple web application. I, it's it's online. The link is um, I'll share the link below. That um, actually draws little diagrams for each Pisano period that you like, up to uh, well, it has a limit. You can't you can't do it for a million. It only goes up to a thousand, but it has to have a limit somewhere. So I set that limit. Anyway, so. I calculate the Pisano period of 13 and it's 28 and I was flabbergasted and well if you look at it the the, the Fibonacci sequence actually 13 is a Fibonacci number it starts 1 1 2 3 5 8 13 the seventh Fibonacci number is 13. So there's two numbers, 7 and 13, that tie into the sun and the moon and all of our cycles of time. So that was my the key revelation that, that got me into all of this. Let's continue to get back to ordering the days of the week. So that mod 13 Pisano period I was just describing, we can draw it out in a dual circle, inner and outer circle, just as we saw for mod nine. And we actually get the same kinds of symmetry that we had in the mod nine clock, right? Because with, if we look at this line here, we'll see that going both counter clockwise and clockwise either direction we have the same sequence 1 2 5 13 8 11 12 same this way so it's going forwards and backwards clockwise and counterclockwise and again we have uh, opposites adding up to well they're not adding up to 9 they're adding up to 13 because now 13 is 0 1 plus 12 is 13 2 plus 11 is 13 5 plus 8 is 13 and again, on the outer circle, we have the line of symmetry this way. So these numbers match 8, 3, 1, 13, 12 going this way. Also 8, 3, 1, 13, 12 going the other direction. And, and then again, we have these on the other line of symmetry. We have the complementary pairs, 13 at top and bottom, 12 and 1 add up to 13, 10 and 3 add up to 13. So we see all those same patterns we saw in the mod 9 circle, we see in this one. And, and actually, a lot of Pisano periods, if you draw them out like this, you will get the same result. Not all of them, but many of them.
coming back for a moment to the mod 9 sequence. Remember, the number 9 occurs twice here at the midpoint and then at the end. And we were using pairs of numbers to get the zodiac sign. This pair is a sign, this pair is a sign, this pair is a sign. Right, so we get 12 pairs of 2, and we have two 9s. And so, using a similar logic, we look at this 28-hour clock for the Th Pisano period of 13, we see that the number 13 occurs not just at the top and bottom, but also at the left and right. So we have four times the number 13. So then why not use quadruples rather than pairs? Let's see what happens if we use quadruple. So drawing out the same sequence, mod 13, we get 1, 1, 2, 3 is the first quadruple, then 5, 8, 13, 8, then 8, 3, 11, 1. We get 7 quadruples total, because 7 times 4 is 28, before we get back to 12, 1, 13, and then cycle back to 1, 1. So, <laughs> that's how we did it. That's how we get the week. And, uh, <laughs> so this is breaking news. Uh, no one else has discovered this as far as I know. So I'm just going to tell you what I do know and what I don't know. What I don't know is I don't know anything to do with the numbers in these three columns. They might have some significance with respect to astrology. Who knows? What I can tell you is if we just look at this first column here, this first column corresponds to the planets and hence the days of the week since the days of the week are each ruled by a planet and named after that planet depending on what language you use and so I have a similar chart here for the zodiac so this is just the same sequence yet again we're using pairs of numbers we have 12 pairs and so again, we have uh, a column which is representing rulership by a planet. So we see the planets here, and they correspond to these numbers here. So I've already explained all of that earlier in this video. Um, now, what's nice about the zodiac here is that we have this uh, pattern also happening on, in the other column corresponding to the elements. And so that makes everything very tight and neat. And um, so unfortunately with this pattern, I only know what to do with the first column. But again, the, this, we have this symmetry because the first column is corresponding to a planetary rulership. And so that's what, what, that's what really reveals the code. Now finally, after all of that, you can see why these numbers are what they are. <laughs> so we're in mod 13, and we've split the 28 cycle of mod 13 into quadruples and taken the first of each quadruple, and we get 1, 5, 8, 12, 11, 13, 2. Now let's bring in my prime key here. Now, so let's look at Mercury and Venus, two and five. All right, so if you're not familiar with the planetary symbols, uh, this is the symbol for Mercury, and it's the number two. There we go, and this is the symbol for Venus. You're probably familiar with, with Venus and Mars. Those are very common. So two and five match my prime key. Now, a little reminder here. Uh, so the days of the week. So sun is Sunday, of course, and moon day. Then Tuesday is Mars day. Wednesday is Mercury day. Thursday is Jupiter day. Friday is Venus day. And then Saturn day. Right, so Mercury, Wednesday, the number two here matches the prime key, and Friday, Venus Day, the number five matches 
the prime key. So then, how about Saturn and Mars? Well, Mars number 13, it was 4 in the zodiac, but here we have just the number 13 straight up for Tuesday. And Saturn for 17, well again, Saturn, Saturn was 8 in the zodiac, and it's 8 again over here. But it's 8 again in a special way because this 8, because remember this is all part of, these are all Fibonacci numbers, under mod 13, which Fibonacci number is this? It's actually number 34, the ninth Fibonacci number. 34 mod 13 is eight, and 34 is 17 plus 17, right? So we've got 17 <laughs> mod nine, and 34 mod 13, both equaling eight, all right? And there we go, the moon, number 11, for Monday, and, and that's, well, that, that's everything except for Sunday being 12 and Jupiter being 1. Well, 12 is of course a multiple of 3. We have Sun as 3. 12 is a multiple of 3, and moreover, 1 plus 2 is 3. And finally, Jupiter. Well, Jupiter is supposed to be 7, right? And that will bring us to the final lesson.